Okay, the factory design pattern in TypeScript. When developing code, you may instantiate objects directly in methods or in classes. While this is normal and okay, you may want to add an extra abstraction between the creation of the object and where it is used in your project. You can use the factory pattern to add that extra abstraction. The factory pattern is one of the easiest patterns to understand and implement and is usually the first pattern that most people learn. Okay, so adding an extra abstraction will also allow you to dynamically choose classes to instantiate based on some kind of logic. Okay, so imagine an application for designing a house and the house has a chair already added on the floor by default. So by adding the factory pattern, you could give the option to the user to choose different chairs and how many at runtime instead of the chair being hard coded into the project when it started, the user now has an option to choose. Okay, so the factory pattern is really about adding that extra abstraction between the object creation and where it is used. This gives you the extra options that you can more easily extend in the future. Okay, now terminology and UML. If you come across other people's code where they've used the factory pattern, they may use similar terminology in their documentation or in their code comments. Okay, so concrete creator, that is the application or the class or the method that calls the creator, that's the factory method. So creator down here, the factory class, declares the factory method that will return the object requested from it. Okay, so concrete product, the object returned from the factory, the object implements the product interface. So here the product interface, the interface describing the attributes and methods that the factory will require in order to create the final product or object. So the factory can return lots of different kinds of products, but they will all conform to a product interface so that the factory class can work without any issue and the final products can be used in the application too without any issue okay so looking at the uml the factory class there the application will call the create object method of the factory class which will return either concrete product a b or c depending on whichever was requested they all extend the concrete product base class which conforms to the i product interface so the factory pattern here is implemented in the factory class the source code, in the concept example, the client wants an object named B. Rather than creating B directly in the client, example a chair hard coded to a floor, it asks the creator or the factory for the object instead. That's the abstraction. Okay, so the factory finds a relevant class using some kind of logic from the attributes of the request, then asks the subclass to instantiate the new object that it then returns back to the client asking for it. Okay, so open the code, source factory factory concept.ts. Okay, so I've opened up Visual Studio Code. I have downloaded the zip file from the beginning of the course in the environment setup section, and I've opened up source factory and factory concept.ts, and that's it there. Okay, so there's the create a class with its create object method, and it's going to return a concrete product A, B, or C, depending on some attribute in the request. Down there, I'm saying give me B. So if some property equals B, I'll return a new concrete product B. Now, at the same time, this factory concept example code is demonstrating quite a few concepts that I've touched on in all the preceding videos. For example, there's an interface. It only has one property name. There's the concrete product, which implements the iProduct interface. So it needs to implement name. There's concrete product A, which extend concrete product B and C, and they all call the super method in their constructor and they will set their own bespoke version of the name like so and also since my create object method inside the creator class is static i don't have to instantiate the creator i can just call creator create object directly excellent so let's execute that control single quote to open up a terminal i'll be using powershell but you may use a different terminal if you like so i'm going to run all the code throughout the pattern examples using tsc watch there we go so tsc command p source watch i'm using the tsc dot command because i'm using powershell if you were using a different terminal you could get away with that the project is in source and it's running in watch mode. And I'm going to leave it running in watch mode throughout all the design patterns. Okay, so starting compilation in watch mode. I'm now going to open the second window where I will run each of the compiled JavaScripts. So first one I'm going to run is factory concept TS there, which was rebuilt into fist factory factory concept and that's the javascript version of the code which is almost identical and you can look at that if you want to except there's no interface in the outputted javascript version and no types in the create object method okay string and 
iProduct. Okay, anyway, node dist factory factory concept.js. There we go, concrete product B. It's a very simple conceptual example. I can say, give me concrete product A. I'm pressing the up arrow there just to rewrite the last line that I executed. Enter concrete product A. C, concrete product C. There we go. So that's the factory concept example. Remember, the factory pattern is really about adding that extra abstraction between the object creation and where it is used. This gives you the extra options that you can more easily extend in the future. In the next video, we'll expand on the factory pattern by looking at a particular use case. Excellent.